Um, my name is Paxton Bagros. I'm from London uh, at Brunel University, currently on exchange at San Francisco State University. Uh, when I first wanted to look at this competition, I wanted to draw aspects from what I've learned here. Um, since coming here, it's been a real life opener. I've learned that the whole lifestyle in America is so much different than back home, as well as, and with that comes a whole new way of design. So I wanted to get that lifestyle choice and bring it into my product. And I found in uh, California, the lifestyle is what I've been exposed to extremely active. So I wanted to have my product to make the uh, make as, it, the people as active as possible. This is my pitch to you. My product is a multi-environmental set of walking poles that give all the users more natural sense of mobility and freedom to move across the terrain. The market opportunity is huge. As everyone knows here, people are getting older and older and the need for products is getting higher and higher. Mobility is the most imminent and noticeable change as people get older and there is a definite need for mobility products on the market. The problem is this, the, all the mobility devices I've seen and found are large, cumbersome, hard to maneuver around their homes and generally across different terrain. This poses a huge problem and would potentially limit the user and no one wants to be limited by their device. So I started off with the most important part of the design process, the research part. I was lucky enough to visit with Alma Via Care Home as well as Dr. June Fisher, who was extremely helpful getting to teaching me about all the different elements that come with walking with a uh, mobility device. It, was, it opened me up to a huge range of problems that I would never have thought about, such as not being able to push down the pins when changing the height of a walker, or simply keeping your mobility device upright at all times. I, I wanted to look at uh, all the different range of products, and I found that there wasn't anything there that really tackled the everyday use and let the user have as much freedom as possible. In terms of pricing range, I will, oh sorry, my uh, product will be a high-end product, so it's going to be up quite uh, expensive in terms of usage, but it's been designed in such a way that it's built for the long term. This is where the Hexi walking poles were born. They are a multi-environmental uh, Walking pole, set of walking poles that allow the user to maneuver freely around the, their terrain, around the home, and generally feel as free as possible while still being as active as possible. There are a lot of benefits to using hiking poles uh, that I never thought, I'd never realised because I was only shown hiking poles through Dr. June Fisher. And I went looking into it, I found that there are huge benefits, health benefits, such as improving posture, reducing the load of the stress that when it comes to the lower joints and ankles, improved walking speed, and generally the gait of the user. So my first key feature for my product is the universal core can grip. It's, I wanted to reach as many people as possible. I didn't want this product purely to be for the elderly. I wanted it to be used by a variety of people where it might be children with walking disabilities or people who are recovering from injury. I didn't want this just to be limited to the elderly, even though the main def demographic is definitely elderly persons. My second key feature is probably my most, uh, I'm most excited about. It's an anti-slip silicon grip. It's a problem that arose through talking with June Fisher, she, I, which I'd never thought about and never would have known without the insight. When wall hiking poles are hit, or through a static object, or just through everyday usage, the mechanism gets loose, and loose, over time it will get looser and looser until eventually at a random moment it will drop. This meaning that there's a sharp drop, and if the person's not quick to react enough, it will fall and eventually 
fall over and potentially hurt themselves. My extra addition is a silicon edge to the grip, which is there so it will um, catch the pole and reduce, uh, increase the amount of friction when on the fall, and that's giving it enough time for the person to react. So it will slow the decreation of the collapse of the poles. The, I'm also looking at keeping a mechanism uh, the adjustment. I found that actually collapsing and putting them back, uh, hiking poles back together, it made it was a lot harder than I thought because there are two separate poles that aren't in the can never be in the right position at the right time. So I added a locking mechanism on the bottom pole, making it a lot more secure and a lot more and a lot easier for people to get back to that natural state as as it's as the adjustment mechanism is the most important, one of the most important parts. My final main feature is the wide foot. It increases grip, it increases stability, and it has interchangeable feet. As, it, as the feet are the most deteriorated part of walking poles and mobility devices, being able to change them is so uh, useful. I, I got to test it with June Fisher, and it was really uh, eye-opening, and it was great to see all the possible changes I'd need to make. Where next? This is where I need to improve. So June Fisher opened, showed me that the poles area actually was quite large, and as well as not being able to fix them together when walking up steps. So that's the next stage. And finally, I want to say thank you, and thank you for listening to the Hexi Poles, the 4x4 of mobility devices. Great, thank you. Very much, great presentation. I like the accent in particular for some reason. So, but, but I'm not a judge, so don't don't ask me. So, questions from the judges? Yeah, go on. Uh, I have a question that is, um, you know, with your hands. It, oh, here, here's my issue, and that is that everybody's poles all look the same. Yours certainly don't. Um, but you know what I think is maybe missing is uh, you know have you thought about putting in something like in your hand grip uh, want a heart rate monitor or something else that can uh, assess uh, as an example if somebody is becoming dehydrated and so forth something that makes the pole come alive as opposed to just being another pole yeah I'm sure uh, there's there's a whole technology element you can go down and having that kind of uh, grip sensor is definitely a possibility, but I wanted my pole to be an affordable and a product you can pretty much buy and manufacture right now and it can be sold as soon as possible. It's a product that will, it will affect everyone that uses it and it's versatile enough to be able to use in all situations. And technology can definitely be included, but that's a step onwards for well, Question here. I'm Walter Bortz from Stanford. I'm 85, and I wonder if this will help my skiing. <laughs> I'm sure it'll definitely help with some aspects of that. Yeah. Great question, thank you. Uh, and then another judge question. In fact, there was a question at the back here, I think. Uh, can you introduce yourself, please? Uh, hi, I'm just curious. How heavy is this pulse? How uh, heavy? They're going to be very, very light. I mean, they're going to be as light as the existing hiking poles, which are a couple of pounds. Uh, the wider foot does increase the slight amount of weight, but that's all to do with manufacture. The manufacturing part of that can be hollowed out. Uh, there's a whole avenue of different manufacturing processes when it comes to just uh, getting rid of weight and even evening it out. So I actually have a question. Um, I, I'm kind of an aficionado of hiking poles in general. I like them. And I, some of them have shock absorbers that will actually give you absorption. Yeah. Did you think about that in your design? Yeah, yeah. The actual my uh, prototype I made actually have shock absorbers in them as well, um, purely because it was based off a hiking pole that I redesigned. But uh, yeah, that's definitely a, uh, a valid point because shock absorbers they help even the most normal kind of hiker walker. So why not put it in these holes as well? So yeah, definitely. You 
um, you had yours as a premium pull. What makes yours worth the extra? Oh, uh, well, so it's because the uh, pole has interchangeable feet, it means it, you can change the feet out and it becomes more of a kind of a, a long-term pole that can be changed and adapted and altered. So it's more of kind of a finer, let's say a fountain pen. You pay good money to get a great fountain pen, you re uh, replace the cartridges. It's that kind of mentality of replacing a very extremely quality product with uh, different parts. Okay, one more question at the back. I think this one can. The lady with the sunglasses. Hi, uh, Netta Blocko from the Centre of Entrepreneurial Studies at the GSB. You mentioned that you might go after other demographics. I was wondering if you've done any testing in those areas. And I know the Brits are taking over this. <laughs> um, in terms of testing, no, I've just kept it purely um, for the elderly, but through uh, different height adjustments and different universal grips, it can definitely be used for different users and that's why I wanted, I wanted my product to be as universal as possible. Uh, I wanted it to hit as many people as possible. In terms of testing, that would be the next step. Obviously, my core demographic is the elderly and then from that I can look at other areas <coughs> and routes. All right, fantastic. Thanks very much.